Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio, Diane here. Hope everyone's well. Um, today I thought we would paint some little whimsical birds, something like this with some flowers, just because it's a nice easy subject and um, I think we'll probably enjoy it. So first thing I'm going to do is find a paintbrush, always useful. And I'm going to just swatch out the palette that I'm going to be using, the colors I'm going to be using for this little drawing. And just so that you know what you need in order to paint along with me if you want to. This is alizarin crimson. And um, that's going to be the red that we're going to be using. You could use other colors. Of course, the same applies for all of this. Um, these are only my chosen few and uh, six of them. This is quinacridone gold. You could use transparent yellow or any other yellow that you happen to have. I like quinacridone because it makes nice clean blends. This is um, cobalt blue, uh, which is a nice clean blue too. And you could use ultramarine. A lot of people have ultramarine and they don't have cobalt. So don't worry, that won't hurt. This is Windsor Violet. It could be perylene, I think perylene mauve or dioxazine mauve or any one of those violet colors. Um, if you don't have it, use something else. Uh, this is green. <clears throat> I think this is hooker's green, but I'm not quite sure. I think so. It's probably hooker's green. Could be sap green, could be olive green. You could use those ones too. And then um, I've got turquoise here, which I could just as easily mix from green and blue or yellow and blue. But I happen to have a tube of turquoise, so sometimes when I'm feeling lazy, I use that. So, um, so yes, alizarin crimson. All the, the characteristics of most of the colors that I use is that they're transparent transparent. You try talking and writing at the same time, it's very hard. Quinacridone gold. All transparent colours, not opaque or semi-opaque. Into violet. Um, I think I'm going to call that hooker's green. I think that's what it is. And the only one that's not completely transparent is turquoise which is a little bit opaque. But if you stick to, to, to transparent colors, you'll find that your mixtures will turn out cleaner, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> um, than if you use um, opaque, more opaque colors. So for example, we're going to be painting um, cobalt blue. Right next to it, I'm going to put some green and I'm hoping it's going to blend nicely. This is just sketch paper. Um, so it probably won't blend as well, but we're hoping that one of the birds is basically going to be those sorts of colors. And the other one is going to be violet and cobalt blue and possibly I don't know, maybe there might be a bit of red in there. I'm not sure how it's going to go yet. And the turquoise and the green are going to be for the leaves of the flowers. And the flowers are also going to have pink from the alizarin crimson and uh, gold in them. So I think it's a good idea always to swatch out the colors that you're going to use. Um, if you've got time and if you're going to take a break between doing this and coming back, then you can let them dry and then you'll be able to see uh, how intense it's going to be 
and whether or not those colours are going to blend nicely together. Um, but I'm going to go ahead actually and continue on right now. I think I could do with a cup of tea, but um, the light is going to go. Now I'm looking for a pencil. That's an F that might be a bit hard. That's a 3B. Um, let me see if I can find something reasonable. What have we got here? A B. That will do nicely. That is kind of sort of soft. Oops, sorry. Sort of soft, but not too soft. Right, so let's see. What shall we do? Let's paint a bird. We'll start off with the beak. And then we'll put in his little head and his little eye. The eye is usually on the level with the beak. Um, if you're not good at drawing, don't worry. Just go over to dianeanton.com and download um, the sketches from there. The body is an oval shape like that. The head is a round shape like that just a slightly flattened round. And you can put the tail wherever you like. It comes out of the bottom edge of the bird. You could put it going up if you wanted. And the legs tend to, tend to look better if you have them angled forward a little bit. They have a toe going back and toes going forward. And bird feet are actually bigger than you think. I had a little chaffinch, was it a chaffinch? Blue tit crashed into our window last year and uh, he stunned himself and I picked him up and cuddled him till he felt better. And it struck me, first of all, how light they are. They don't weigh anything, it's imperceptible weight. Um, and then the other thing that struck me was that they are, their feet are huge, <laughs> gigantic. Okay, so that's one bird and then we're going to have another one who's going to be looking in the other direction I think are we to do that yeah why not and we put a little eye in there a little beak and some feet long toes these are not going to be any particular type of bird. They're just whimsical birds. Don't hesitate to rub it out if you don't. I think the eye is too close to the edge there. Into his beak again, or her beak. So we've given her a sort of upstanding tail. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put um, some very simple flowers around the outside edge. I'm going to do them just, uh, just the petals are going to be those nice um, five petaled daisy type things. And we'll put some leaves in amongst them like this. I don't need to worry too much about where things go and whether they're in the right place. What's the right place anyway? Am I in the right place? I don't know. My husband's always telling me we should go and live somewhere else. I keep saying to him, can you think of anywhere better? Think of anywhere better? I'll go there, but I can't think of anywhere better. I've moved too many times in my life already. I think I've lived about 45 different houses in my lifetime, which is enough for anybody, don't you think? So I'm planning on ending my days here, preferably not too soon. <laughs> I'm just giving myself a slight indication of the petals of these flowers here, and an indication of the stems and the leaves. And I'm allowing my, um, what's the word? Uh, I'm allowing my 
creativity, if there is such a thing, to just do whatever it feels like. Okay, uh, that's it. Right, that's the sketch. So I'm going to put some colour on these now, and I'm going to then probably come in, <coughs> excuse me, with a bit of ink. So let's find a brush. This is size seven. I think that's probably big enough. And we're going to paint these wet in wet. Well, not wet in wet, sorry. Not wet in wet. We're going to allow them to blend on the paper. We're not aiming for anything lifelike in the sense of looking like any other bird. Or should I say a real bird? I'm just going to let the colours blend. See what happens. I don't know if you can hear the cockerel crowing in the background. We just got two young male chickens. And they are. I love the sound. Tamsin says, uh, my daughter, she says, you know, it's wonderful, isn't it? When you hear a cockerel crowing, you know you're never going to go hungry because you'll always have the possibility of chickens and eggs to eat. And she has a point. So in other words, hearing a cockerel crowing is, it makes you feel happy. It makes us feel happy, hopefully. I don't know what the neighbors are gonna think about it, but. Um, well, we don't have really got any neighbours miles away. And the same as me and my husband, they're all a bit deaf. So, you know, they won't hear anything. Unfortunately, our nearest neighbours just recently died. And uh, everybody seems to be ill. Everybody around us seems to be ill. So anyway, I'm painting this bird in Windsor Violet. And I'm going to then put some cobalt blue on her breast. There we are. And now we will, and we let them just mix and mingle. And their legs, we want some kind of brown colour and I want it to be a soft colour. So I'm going to resort to my, um, this is a, an, a palette that I was doing mixing on the other day. It's a paper palette, but it's great. This is completely dry, but when you touch it, you can reactivate the paint. So even though, you, you know, waste not, want not, so to speak. So here I've got some colours that are perfect for the legs of chickens. So I will use that. Not chickens. Well, they would be perfect for the legs of chickens, but these aren't chickens, I don't think. I don't think they're gonna turn into chickens. Do some kind of metamorphosis or something. So we just put that in there. Remember to do their feet nice and big. And then we want a sort of yellowy colour for the beaks, won't we? I'll put the eyes in at the end, probably, because if I don't, they'll, they'll bleed all over the place. Um, so now we'll do the flowers. So we want some fairly, can you see that? Yes. Um, some fairly, light pink and I'm just going to let my brush wander uh, uncontrollably holding it a long way from the end 
so back here. If you hold it down here like this, you immediately, everything about you tightens up and you'll get much more accuracy. But if you want looseness, you know, everyone says, oh, I want to learn to paint loose. Well, that's what you have to do. You have to let go. Um, I'm going to have a moan, moan alert. Um, there's a thing sort of going around on YouTube at the moment where people, and I'm not going to name any names, but some people are saying that they're painting abstracts and they're painting what I can only say are slightly loose versions of something. So for example, uh, a landscape or, you know, a bird or a flower and they're calling them abstract. That's fine, you can call it what you like. I don't have any control over the language, but it's not correct when it comes to the art world because abstraction is when you take the essence of something and interpret it so that it re reflects what you think or feel something means, but it doesn't resemble that thing. And the goal is that it shouldn't make you think, oh, what a nice house nice abstract house but you think oh that makes me that makes me feel homely or something or nothing makes me feel nothing anyway so these are not abstract flowers they are loose interpretive um, interpretations of the idea of flower, but they're not abstract. Not abstract. I'll shut up now. My daughter and I have got code word now. When both, when either of us wants to have a rant about something that's wrong in the world, we say Slobodov. And the other one goes, oops, sorry. I was ranting again. You can't help it though, can you, when you see everything going wrong? Anyway, never mind. So that's the flowers, stage one. So now we're going to do exactly the same kind of thing for the leaves. And I'm gonna vary the colors of the leaves. Some of them are gonna be yellowish, green. Some of them are gonna be more greeny. I might not use the turquoise after having got it out, I might not use it because like I said, it's not completely transparent. Okay, maybe I can put the eye of the bird in now. What I normally do for the bird's eye, I do a sort of circle leaving a bit of white and then I go around it a couple more times. And now I'm going to carry on with my Stettler pigment liner and I'm going to do some inking. And just sort of going around the outline a little bit, the outside edge, just putting in a bit of an outline. And then I'll do his, their legs. And I always like to put the toenails on the feet. There we are. And this one. Give them some scaly legs, because they have scaly legs, don't they?
You can give a bird quite a lot of character with, with the eye. Let's not forget to give them something to stand on. And um, now I'm going to do a little bit of pen work on the flowers. So let's just roughly... Now I'm holding the pen not only quite a long way back, but really loosely. Because because that's what I'm going to do. I was watching some, does anyone watch TikTok? I'm addicted to TikTok and I don't, I, I don't, I won't deny it. Um, I started off watching, uh, I came across someone called Dylan Hollis, who is a Bermudian. I used to live in Bermuda. So um, I, <laughs> when I was living there, he was two years old and <laughs> we probably saw him being pushed in his pram down, down 4th Street or something like that, uh, most likely. Anyway, he's Bermudian, he's now at college in Wyoming, and he does these absolutely, I think, absolutely hysterical um, TikTok. And he's now on YouTube too, with longer ones, on cooking, and he's, he's, he really likes things from the 1950s and 60s and older. And someone said to him, you look like you were... You dress like someone from the 1950s, and I say, good for him. Um, anyway, so he's doing all these amazing recipes from up to 100 years ago, things from the war and the depression and, and so on, incredible things like water pie and uh, fake chocolate cake and all sorts of amazingly bizarre things. And uh, But he's just hilarious the way he does it, and they're very short and funny. Anyway, so that got me hooked on TikTok. But now I found this thing from people who live in South Korea and all the gadgets that they've got in their houses. And it's just absolutely fascinating. Self-emptying bins, would you believe it? You collapsible foot spas. I don't know. It's just like they're living a hundred years in the future. It's just bizarre. Anyway, it's quite entertaining. So meanwhile, I have gone round all my flowers and I'm going to just put in a few little um, darker strokes. I'll tell you something else as well, and I'll go back to talking about art now, having talked about Bermuda. It reminded me of something. Um, when I lived in Bermuda, which was an utter privilege, I have to say, I, am, I actually don't think about it as much as I should because it was the most absolutely phenomenal experience I've ever had. And listen, all you American ladies who are watching me, I want to pay homage to you because when I was living in Bermuda, there was something called the American Women's Club. And it was run by absolutely fantastic American women, believe it or not. And anyone could join and I'm English, so I immediately joined with some people I'd met. These ladies were just fantastic. They're like you, I'm sure. They, they knew how to organize things, they were kind. We did cool stuff and I took over the running of the art group and um, we organized exhibitions and we used to meet every week in one person's house or another and sit and chat and paint, paint and chat. Didn't do much painting, did a lot of chatting and eating of cake and, um, and so on. And anyway, I think I'd, I've lost touch with everybody that I met there. It's been a long time now, it's more than 20 years. No, wait a minute. Yes, no, it is 20 years. Feels longer. Um, I've lost touch with them all, but I will never forget people like Nancy, who brought me a bottle of champagne to one of the openings of the exhibitions that we did, just as, and, and, and Mimi, who I did a private, um, uh, show with in the city hall called what did we call it can't remember I'll talk about this again another time but um, we sold such a lot of paintings we couldn't believe it I, I sold my very first painting in Bermuda and there was a chap there called Mr Frith and he bought so many of my paintings I wonder if he's still got them or whether he's been them all 
he just, every time I had an exhibition, he bought paintings. It was fantastic. It really was. And I just fell in love with everyone from America. You're wonderful, you women, you really are. So nice and kind. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable because I grew up in England and I'm not going to say anything else about that. I've lived in, um, obviously England. I've lived, I've emigrated to Canada. I've got Canadian citizenship. Um, I've lived in Germany and Austria and France, obviously where I am now, and Bermuda and the Bahamas and America, briefly in Florida. Um, Why am I saying this? Oh, Egypt, I've lived in Egypt. I've lived in Yemen, the Yemen in Arabia. And uh, wherever I've been, I've met wonderful American people and, and yeah, you're wonderful. Okay, so now we need to put some shapes on the birds. So I'm going to put some ticks on here, not that kind of tick of V-shaped gestures there. I'm going to give this one some curly feathers and this one to make them look cute. Just a few. And I mustn't forget, we need to have something to stand on, don't they? just put a little bit more colour in there. Look how this has granulated here. I've got quite a bit of, um, that's because the cobalt blue tends to granulate when it hits um, the quinacridone gold. So if you don't want that, um, don't put those two colours together, but it can look quite nice. And then I'm just going to put a little bit more blue just to give it a little bit more shape. So I'm basically just going over um, the colour with the same colour again. Okay, I don't think I've got quite enough flowers here, so I'm just going to do some more. Another one up here, I think. Made myself feel very nostalgic for my years, time living in uh, Bermuda. That's made me go very quiet. Anyway, yeah. No turning the clock back. Did I mention, you can get the sketch for this, I haven't done it yet because I'm still creating the painting, but there will be a sketch um, on dianeanton.com. You can go over there and download that for free. We've also got a few odds and ends over there that you can have at a very small price. Coloring books and things like that, which have gathered all these paintings together. 
and then I need to come back with my pen, don't I, and make these the same. Your style might be different from mine, but you could take the idea and develop it however you want to do it. I'm not gonna be very prescriptive. Just do whatever you feel like, it's just an idea. I was thinking about putting some white ink on the birds, but I decided not to in the end. I thought I'd just leave it like that. So there we are, I'll let that dry. And meanwhile, I shall let you go. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you don't mind my ramblings and my reminiscences. And uh, I'll see you over on the website. There's a blog up every day that you can read. And if anyone's having any trouble finding anything on the website or finding even where our website is, do pop a question in the comments below if you've got any questions about membership or anything. Just do that and uh, I'll get back to you. So I'll let you go now. Time for uh, tea and I will see you soon. Thanks for being here and bye for now. Bye bye everybody. Bye bye.